Hi, I'm Steve Miller, call me Slim, and this is the Slim Market Week. It's a look back at what happened in the financial markets in the past week, and a look forward to what might happen in coming weeks, and hopefully lots of great ideas and opportunities for you throughout this show. Well, the stock market ran into a lot of selling for most of last week, as investors were clearly focused on the inflation situation. For those that believed the numbers would show inflation was subsiding, well, they were clearly disappointed. And for those that were hoping that earnings season would be reflective of a resilient economy, then they also were disheartened by the numbers and the small number of uh, releases that have come out so far, which are mostly banks. Uh, JP Morgan down tw uh, uh, 28% on earnings, Morgan Stanley down 29%, Citigroup minus 27, Wells Fargo minus 48% on their earnings, uh, and those uh, are uh, much worse than had expected. And bank stocks, well they have gotten crushed as that inverted yield curve hurts them, and that's going to get worse. Actually, the bank stocks have done far worse than the S&P 500 has, one of the worst groups. Inflation numbers were scary as the CPI was up 1.3% for the month versus expected 1.1%. Year over year, that's 9.1% and those headline numbers, of course, the core is lower because they don't think that food or energy matters. PPI, that came out uh, much worse, 1.1% versus 0.8% expected. And the producer price index is up year over year 11.3%. Thank you for saving us, Federal Reserve. Um, that sent rates higher as now 75 basis points in increase for that July 26-27th meeting is back on the table. Uh, and uh, some analysts were talking a 100 basis point increase, so uh, I think it was doubtful. And the Fed heads are out dissing this right now, saying that they're not going to increase by 100%. And that actually gave the market a bit of a lift as it turned around on Thursday, and now here on Friday is having a decent rebounding day. <clears throat> Higher rates and economic fears, that has lifted the dollar, which has now moved over 109 as money flows into the U.S. to benefit from the higher interest rates here. The real source of dollar strength is euro weakness. Uh, as the, the uh, eurozone is under huge stress, inflation uh, there also extremely high, and of course they have an energy shortage, and it may be getting worse uh, if this pipeline, uh, gas pipeline, isn't turned back on, which supposedly is closed for maintenance. Uh, out of Russia, and do whatever it takes Draghi, um, he resigned, and Parliament has really put him under a lot of pressure, as they said his inflation fight, not enough, that's the inflation that he created uh, when he was head of the ECB, and handed that off to Lagarde, who is also a disaster, yes, I absolutely hate the central bankers, and the euro is 57% of, of that dollar index, and join that with the UK, the pound also in huge trouble as they have very big problems there. And that is a lot of upside pressure for the dollar. Um, that uh, is likely to continue here because if you check our analysis in future speak, you will see the, our analysis on the euro and the pound, which points to lo those currencies being lower for some time out. So that will be a reason to see the dollar still buoyant. It will have pullbacks, but it is still very strong. And that is good and bad. Good is that, well, our goods are more expensive, uh, and the Eurozone goods are cheaper. So that calms inflation here, yes. Uh, that essentially allows us to export our inflation elsewhere. The bad, well, that hurts earnings. 
uh, is the internationals here in the U.S. They get very, uh, their earnings uh, are uh, very affected by the lack of demand. And at the same time, uh, input costs are going up, as you see that PPI at an extraordinary 11.3%, and margins going down. Um, add to that, you know, the slowing economy with wage pressure coming in at the same time. Uh, and you can see uh, we are really, really in that stagflation uh, type uh, situation. Uh, the, the second quarter uh, projections now for the GDP here in the U.S. are negative, about 1.5%. Uh, that would be the second negative quarter were it to happen. And that would mean, yes, a recession doesn't seem like a very steep recession yet, uh, but all of that is bringing downgrades by analysts. In fact, the Bank of America analyst, uh, he lowered his year-end projection from 4,200 on the S&P 500 to 3,600. Earnings are going to be bad this season. I mean, really bad, and probably the outlook is worse for all of those reasons I just talked about. But the market's priced a lot of that in, and coming up, uh, I'm going to show you a very interesting look at the stock market. And there's likely a bounce coming in this bear market that we're in, uh, which we called from late last year uh, almost perfectly. Uh, and uh, I'm telling you that uh, there is a bounce coming, and I'll show you that. It will be a perfect hook for investors. Friday, well, the market cut what was some pretty big losses for the week with the indexes down only uh, about uh, five-tenths of a percent to about two percent. Uh, Dow is the best index, barely down at all, just about a half a percent. And the RUT, R-U-T, is the weakest as that Russell's down about two percent on the week so far here as we're doing this show at midday. Bonds, treasuries um, uh, are uh, up as yields fall as recession fears overtake the Fed tightening. Yes, the market is in command. The 30s gain three and a half points when it's very clear we're going to have a 75 basis point increase in the short-term rates, and the 10-year yields fell by about 19 basis points, and that yield curve is steepening, and it's going to get steeper as, these, uh, as the uh, recession clicks in and at the same time the Fed is tightening. So here we are again, back like 2018, where uh, the Fed is so off the rhythm uh, that uh, they have to uh, increase rates at a time when the economy is really slowing down uh, because they kept rates low and stimulated so much into the economy along with the ridiculous programs of government spending uh, that pushed up the stock market to unbelievable valuations, and we're seeing that reset going on right now in the Fed way, way off as far as that goes. And the Treasuries are reflecting that uh, as they're lowering interest rates while the Fed is raising them, and that is a steepening yield curve. Gold, um, this is the fifth week down for gold in a row, $38 approximately. And uh, the uh, low for the week was about 1695. We thought it could possibly dip under 1700. Uh, the silver uh, seventh week in a row to the downside now about 45 cents. Uh, and we're going to do a little gold quickie at the end of the show, uh, and we'll show you our analysis there on the gold market, which we think is bottoming, and the timing that we have been showing is spot on. Dollar gains about three quarters of a percent. The high got up to 109.29. This is kind of in a resistance area, we think. Uh, we had a projection that the dollar could get up to about 19.60, which we showed on Future Speak. So it still may be going there, of course, because of these conditions uh, of the very weak euro currency. The euro currency is going to bounce, the dollar is going to pull back. All of that will set up some rally for the uh, metals markets, but I believe uh, that would be temporary. Oil loses $7 uh, as this recession that we have here. Now uh, we have very clear demand destruction or fear of that, and the oil market gives back uh, a ton.
We really have a lot to show you here in this show, uh, and uh, I want you to stay tuned because there is so much coming on coming up in this show, I'm going to give you the stock market analysis and some very interesting comparisons of 2008 to 2022, and I'll give you the S&P 500 weekly and daily analysis. If you're uh, right now watching the show uh, on the, uh, the full show, then you'll be seeing this right now while some people that scroll all the way to the end of the show only to see the S&P 500 analysis. Well, they're going to be hunting all over for it. So good for you for sticking with the show right here. Uh, then we're going to show you a level four membership special and you'll learn about our unique style of analysis and you'll get the broadest support for your trading that you can get anywhere uh, from our incredibly deep team four analysts that we have here on staff. Katie's going to show you multiple time frame analysis and show you Twitter which of course uh, is in the news all the time now and potential for a positive uh, movement in here. Matt is going to show what's new at Aslim uh, and you don't want to really miss this because there is some great stuff there that you're going to see. And I'm going to give you a quick analysis on the gold market and that bottom that is approaching. Remember to go to AskSlim.com and explore uh, and uh, look around. We have so much there. If you've never been there before, at least become a free member. You'll get some sense for what we're doing. Uh, on YouTube, subscribe to our channel. Click the notification bell. You'll know when we put things up. And do like this video. Give us a thumbs up. That helps us with the uh, algorithms. Uh, so please uh, help us in that way also. On Twitter, follow us at AskSlim. Matt can help you by writing to him, matt at AskLim.com, for all of our membership info, uh, first-time member specials, questions you have on our huge offerings of education and analysis. And do stay tuned for our Level 4 deal that is fantastic. And I'm going to do some, some great uh, uh, previewing of some of our studies on there. So you'll love that. Stock market, S&P 500. This is scary. I'm going to show you comparing 2008 to 2022. You got to ask the question, is this valid or what part of it is valid? This is really interesting. Here's a chart and I give credit to Wall Street Silver. Wall Street Silver is a, uh, a website that had uh, published this in a tweet. Uh, and I just took further analysis from what they put out, which was a comparison of the 2000 and eight market to 2022 and you can see in here what I have it labeled as the 2007 peak uh, there and comparing it with the 2001 peak it was actually 2002 January but some indexes were uh, early, were late in 2021 so that's why I have it labeled that way this is incredibly interesting so here is your peak here in 2007 and from that peak in 2007 over a period of about 5.6 months, peak to trough, it fell 16.7% and then had a rebound. Remember, 5.6 months is what that did right there. Here, from that peak here right at the end of the year uh, to this decline there, peak to trough, 5.5 months. And look at these patterns in here, how close they are, how similar they are in that decline. I had to show you this once I saw Wall Street Silver put that up. This decline here this year is 24.5% peak to trough. And uh, again, almost a very similar time frame. So I wanted you to see how close that was. Now, we're going to look at the next slide. But you can see in here that there was a rally that came off uh, of there. And that rally, uh, based on during that time frame, was uh, about 13.1%. You can see now I scooted the, the chart a little up here. And you could see that rally in here of about 13.1%. It got up here into the resistance zone between the major major 50 and the major 61.8 percent uh, that was uh, after this 16.7 uh, percent decline but then you can see move to the downside again we're if you extrapolate off of that and of course you're taking a leap when you do that in here because every market isn't exactly the same though this one looks almost that way you know that would give you a rally in here of uh, uh, over 13 percent now that would only get you over the major 38 0.2% to about 4,100. The question is, did this bottom form already? Our analysis showed it was coming out uh, a little bit later 
uh, than uh, where we have this bottom right now. And I'll show you a little more of that anal analysis as we move forward. But you'd get this rally up over here over 4,100, maybe 4,200, and then move down again because you're fo if you follow the same pattern in here. I'm just projecting out there uh, using um, the, uh, uh, the analysis of the comparison between uh, 2007 peak and the 2021 peak. And now let's look a little bit further, and you can see in here, well, what happened uh, back after that 13% rally? Well, you had that uh, nice rally, and then you had that big decline that got lower than that low. You can see I have the projection right over here uh, as it would move out into uh, October, November of this year on the downside. We actually have September, October is the likely uh, decline uh, dec declining period. If you compared the uh, the fact that it lost 53% from the peak of that bounce, that would take you down to you know 2100 to 2300 on the S and P 500. But being that the this year the rally was 24.5%, much bigger than in 2008, I'm going to give it credit for not having that kind of a decline and it not being a complete wash out of over 50% in the whole bear market and my target down around 3200 on the S&P 500 and that would come out uh, potentially into the beginning of next year before this whole thing is formed. Remember this decline here fell to 666 in the absolute panic after uh, Lehman and and Bear Stearns and uh, just this absolutely brutal uh, unwinding of this bubble that was created, of course, by the Fed and by the government, uh, where they allowed uh, mortgages to be, well, you could buy something and even get 25% back in your pocket. So there was insanity going on at that time, and the washout was absolutely huge. I'm going to say 3200 on the downside uh, by early part of next year, uh, and that will be what the bear market looks like. So I don't think it's going to be that big, but those are the comparisons, and I thought it was important to bring that to you, uh, as you see here, looking at the uh, 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 at that uh, pattern uh, way back over here, uh, where you can see that beautiful comparison of the 2007 uh, peak versus the peak at the beginning of this year uh, and the, the, how that perfectly look and the extrapolation of the rally to 4100 in the bounce uh, and then the move down into maybe September, October and then I think that move continues to the downside into the early part of next year uh, to extend that bear market. So that's the comparison. That's uh, me extrapolating from that and telling you what I think is going to happen if that comparison were to continue. So let's look at the S&P 500 now. Uh, I'm going to give you our multiple time frame analysis looking at SPX at the weekly chart and at the daily chart. Give you some uh, idea of what the cycle analysis looks like. Uh, in both time frames, and uh, also uh, a little bit of a change for our level uh, for all of our members who get our charts on the S and P 500. We've added in a half cycle, a minor half cycle uh, that really looks like it's it's very relevant. And uh, kudos to one of our members, and I'll show you who that is in just a moment, uh, who said it's important to look at this, and I think he was right. So here's the S&P 500 cycle analysis. And what you have in here is, well, that <coughs> big period right in here, that pandemic bubble and historic valuations uh, as the market moved up. Uh, to 200% of GDP during this period. This is the period of government and Federal Reserve insanity. This is the period of the Great Reset Phase 1 that is going on right over here. Now you can see these harmonics right here. <coughs> These big cycles are the broadest, uh, the longest uh, period in these harmonics, and we added in a, a half cycle. We had th we have third cycles and third cycles, and minor half cycles right now. Now we've done the same thing on the daily chart also, and you can see what it really looks like when we look now. 
That third cycle looked like it bottomed here, one third of this big harmonic family. Now the uh, minor uh, half cycle looks like it bottomed right over here and it looks very relevant. What that would give you is a continuation of this rally, maybe a little dip right in here, uh, and then maybe even getting up as high as uh, this would be uh, over uh, close to 4,000 right up over there, which is in alignment with that projection we showed comparing 2008 to 2022. Uh, and then moving down, and then that bigger, that uh, ye that yellow area is the big period of risk. As you could see uh, in the previous one, you got that big slam right in there. Well, that's what we think is going to have right there as we are projecting down during that period to 3,500. Now, uh, there's, uh, you see our note right over here, the possible bear market low projection out there is in April of 2023, and that's where we think it's going to be around 3,200, uh, maybe a little bit worse on the S&P 500 as the bear market extends out much further than other people think. So the uh, uh, pattern as we're looking at it right in here, and remember these on the bottom are the cycle brackets. They are not the cycles. The actual cycles is uh, how they appear here in uh, on the actual chart. So we're looking for some attempted upside in here, but really a lot of chop and then the big downside risk comes out here again in August, September, and maybe out into October, where it's likely to be moving down very significantly. Right now, we'll be looking for that bounce, uh, that rally up there to uh, somewhere near 4,400 on the SPY as a potential. Here, when I look at the daily chart, this is really interesting. Now, look at each of those periods where the trough was. Uh, and uh, where, where they all kind of came down together in nested timing, as we call it. That brought you a big decline here, and a big decline here, and a big decline here. And that one comes right out over here. Now, we had these minor thirds right in here, and those cycles started to disappear as the minor half really showed up. And I want to give credit to Tobias K, who's one of our members, valued members, of course. And we love it when our members put their eyes on our work. And if they see something that is relevant and share it with us and it looks right, man, I'm going to put it on the charts. And that's exactly what we have in here. And you can see the minor half cycle as the relevance in it now becomes more important. So here's that minor half cycle low right in here. Here's that minor half cycle low right in here. And you'll note that that upside move that we had from Thursday afternoon and moving now into Friday is where this rising phase would be coming in. So great job on that, Tobias. Uh, as I had looked at this, I didn't give it a lot of credence because the minor thirds really were, were showing very clearly. Uh, and then they disappeared. And then you brought this to me and I said, wow, this really looks right. That uh, In that case, this decline over here to this level um, below 38.38 has less relevance than it did before. And now the probabilities of our projections up here to at least this 39.72 area and potentially up here to 40.53, uh, 405 on the SPY really looks relevant. And that again follows that bouncing area that we showed uh, in uh, the comparison of 2007, uh, 2008 to 2022. So bouncing time frame right in here really looks right. Now momentum in here is negative, And you can see that looking here at the slim ribbon as it's been moving down right in here. Now it, it got neutral for a little bit and then turned negative again. So it hasn't turned positive yet. Now when I look at the weekly chart, I'll go back there and you'll see that uh, our um, important indicator in here for momentum is the reversal scout. You can see that right here and that is flattening out but still negative. So these, these are still negative. It needs to do some work. Now I want to note that the NASDAQ uh, on the NASDAQ weekly chart, the uh, reversal scout has now turned positive. So we have some indications of a little better market in here, an extension of this rebound before the next selling wave comes in. And that, uh, as you can see right here on this chart, 
uh, we uh, say that the on the daily chart that next ideal trough is around September 8th plus or minus a few days that's when that big next selling period comes in so the projection now would be to continue this rally up into this area uh, just below 4,000 to about 4050 is a potential and then move to the downside again once it breaks out of this triangular shape you could get a nice impulse to the upside uh, that of course we believe based on the sum of the evidence will fail and will be moving down again so that's our analysis for the s p 500 thank you to tobias k for uh, sharing his work that we have now added on here which i think is very relevant uh, and for all of our uh, especially level three and level four members uh, you see something that you believe is important send it on i'm going to review it and if it looks right it'll be on the charts just as tobias has done here so again We'll look for a little more to the upside, uh, maybe one burst up to that, uh, into those higher resistances, and then a lot of risk coming into September. That's uh, the look at the S&P 500 multiple time frame analysis. This is our level four membership special, and I have so much to show you here. Incredible content and services for trading and investing. I think that we have just about the broadest uh, amount of resources for traders and investors that I have seen anywhere. And believe me, I have looked at a lot of different sites. This is our top tier uh, special trial for level four. First time subs uh, and for upgrades, if you happen to be uh, level uh, one, two or three and you want to upgrade, uh, that would be fine with us. And we'll prorate your current uh, analysis and uh, your, your current membership and give you that uh, refund. Um, the uh, special that we have going on here includes all of this. Multiple time frame charts, our entire fo focus list of 84 symbols with our uh, cycle analysis. Uh, which you can import, save, and view live on your Thinkorswim platform. I'm going to show you that. Our proprietary studies, uh, Aslim Ribbon, Aslim Ribbon PO, Reversal Scout, Market Condition Indicator, Option Bias Indicator, and more. All of those. Import, import them and save them onto your Thinkorswim platform. Yes, Thinkorswim is important uh, to be able to really benefit fully from Level 4. Uh, you'll get our grid archive, our custom grids with our best indicators, support resources include our free live webinars, uh, chart analysis training, Q&A with uh, the whole Aslim analytical team on Discord. Uh, fantastic things. Katie is now doing uh, a special hour uh, where she helps uh, people with uh, uh, how to put our analysis together. Uh, with option trading, it's, she does an unbelievable job. You'll see her do some things a little later on in this show. Uh, and uh, your best practices for utilizing Ask Them custom charts and studies. A full membership access to everything, level 4 plus 3, 2, and 1. And go to AskThem.com to the membership page for the details on that. This is a special three-month trial for level 4. There isn't a lot of time left on this. It's only going to run through next weekend. 35% off uh, our quarter, regular quarterly. So in other words, you're going to pay $303.75 for three months. That's 101 and a quarter per month versus our regular 159 a month. And again, this is a one-time use. You can only get this special one time. So uh, please do uh, consider becoming a level four member. I'm going to show you some things regarding level four. Now I want you to take a look at our live charts uh, on chart streams. Uh, this uh, uh, it broadcasts the most watched symbols, uh, which include our unique indicators. Level four members have access to all of our proprietary studies on Thinkorswim. Look, uh, I'm going to the chart streams page here on AskLim.com, and you can see what we're offering here are broadcasts of these key symbols that somebody will, so, that so many watch with all of our proprietary indicators on there. Let's just take a look really quickly if I click on SPY. So this is live right now as you see us broadcasting uh, on uh, four different time frames on the SPY. You can see in here 
the weekly and this indicator coming down here is a reversal scout it's negative telling you the long-term conditions are quite negative for the stock market uh, this uh, is our uh, proprietary indicator the slim ribbon po that's on there the slim ribbon is also on the chart showing you on the daily chart that it is negative on the weekly on the two hour chart you can see in here everything is still negative also though you're getting a rally up here into the resistance area and here's your really short term 15 minute chart if you look on the SIR 15 minute uh, broadcast that we do on the S&P 500 NASDAQ and the Russell you will know that it turned up right in here and is getting an inner day rally under positive conditions here on the 15 minute chart so that's what uh, the live broadcast on SPY looks like and when you look here, you can see those type of broadcasts are on all of these uh, right there, uh, all of these studies, uh, all of these symbols uh, on uh, uh, that we broadcast from AskLim.com. But if you are a level four member uh, and you can have access to all of our proprietary studies on any symbol that you want, uh, just simply by uh, downloading this great grid right over here and switch this over to let's say GDX and you can see that all of the studies that we're looking at here are on GDX and look how negative this is on the weekly on the daily on the two hour right over there and on the 15 minute you can get uh, all of our indicators on the bottom you see in here is our uh, market condition indicator right over here this is our option bias indicator all of that is so negative uh, that you can see uh, looking at that. That's uh, really poor conditions uh, for the GDX right now. We expect that that will improve at some point, and this chart will actually show you that. You could look at anything in here. Let's just look at Apple really quickly, and you can see all of our proprietary uh, studies will uh, pop up here for Apple, uh, which is, uh, look here in the daily, that is beginning to improve. Two hours uh, been in an upward trend. Uh, so uh, even look here at the weekly, you can see that upward turn in momentum. So Apple is clearly improving. Uh, when you look at these studies, look down here at the uh, at this option bias indicator, you can see it has turned green right over there. Looking here at the market condition indicator right there, it is now moving through what we call the swing zone. And if it gets above that 25 area, which is close, it will be turning positive. So this is a great example of uh, some of the uh, very uh, important ways that you can use our chart grid. This is a great, great uh, set of tools uh, for your trading. So I wanted to show you that looking at that, you will have access to all of that and uh, everything uh, that we have in our uh, levels four, three, two, and one by becoming a level four top tier member. Remember, it's a spe uh, one time use special. Uh, you'll pay 375 and that's a 35% discount from that regular $159 per month. And it's best with the Thinkorswim platform. If you don't have a Thinkorswim or you don't want to open an account there, uh, then really level three is better. And you'll get lots of this stuff also, uh, but you won't have our live proprietary indicators, which are important. So that is level four. I wanted you to see this unbelievable special that we have and how you can really enhance your trading by using our studies and getting all of the support uh, that we offer uh, for traders and investors in so many ways. So thanks for listening to that. This is multiple time frame analysis on Twitter. Katie is going to do unbelievable job giving lessons. She is so good at this and she's going to show you what is coming as a positive setup in this very volatile and newsy stock uh, uh, Twitter. So I think you'll enjoy this. Hi, I'm Katie with Ask Slim. You may have seen the Cycle Low Timing Tracker in some of our previous videos. This is a tool that we developed recently that identifies opportunities that may be setting up going into and coming out of cycle lows. You may notice from time to time that some of the symbols on the tracker are in bold. Those symbols are ones that may be especially worth keeping your eye on because the bold font is telling us that they're in timing windows on both the intermediate and short-term charts.
This nesting of cycle lows in multiple time frames can sometimes lead to very interesting opportunities. The one I'm going to show you today has been in the news a lot recently and may not be for the faint of heart because of the binary event risk, but the analysis is pointing to the possibility of a long side trade setting up. That symbol is Twitter, found in the cycle timing box for both the weekly time frame and the daily time frame, which is why it's bold. It's also found in the bottom pending box for the daily time frame, and that means there's been enough positive price action on that chart to trigger the bottom pending algorithm. I will show you that when we look at the charts. This is a weekly chart of Twitter. On the bottom, we have cycle brackets that are 20 bars in length, and they're divided into minor half cycles. These cycle brackets show us an ideal cycle, but the actual cycles are outlined in black up around the candlesticks. Now these purple vertical lines show where the cycle lows occurred, and you can then compare those with the ideal cycle brackets on the bottom to get some idea of the consistency of the cycles. We also have a grayed out cycle bracket on here that was relevant in the past. I've left it on here because sometimes those what we call ghosted cycles regain their dominance and I like to watch how price reacts around those ghosted cycle troughs. We also have blue vertical dashed lines over here on the right. They'll show a period of time plus and minus a few weeks around the ideal end of the current cycle, when we expect a cycle low to form and for Twitter to begin moving up into the rising phase of the next cycle. So we're currently right in the middle of that time period with a nice bullish candle this week that may have formed our intermediate low. Another tool that we use to identify new rising phases of cycles, as well as declining phases, is our proprietary momentum indicator, the Reversal Scout, which is the green and purple ribbon on the chart. Notice how it turns green shortly after the um, cycle lows have formed, and that confirms the new rising phase. It also turns purple shortly after the cycle peak is formed, showing us that a declining phase has begun. So currently the reversal scout is still negative, so we're watching for that to turn green to confirm the new rising phase. Now this cycle that we're just finishing up in Twitter has not broken below this prior cycle low support, but it has retraced almost all the way down there. So because of that deep retracement, the probabilities favor not being able to make a higher cycle high in this upcoming cycle. Therefore, I've projected into the middle of this resistance zone from about $41 up to about 46, the middle coming in at 43 and a half. Of course, as I mentioned earlier, Twitter's in the news and has a significant amount of binary event risk, not only with its dealings with Elon Musk, but also with earnings coming up next week. Let's also take a quick look at the daily chart. These daily cycles are 32 bars in length, and we are in the daily cycle timing window as well, which is why Twitter is in bold on the cycle low timing tracker. This positive price action has triggered the bottom pending algorithm. So we likely have our daily cycle low here in sync with our intermediate term low. Now momentum is still negative on the daily chart as well, both the reversal scout as well as the slim ribbon. The slim ribbon colors the candles green, gray, or red depending on momentum conditions, and obviously they are still red. So we would like for momentum to turn positive, and once that happens, on a pullback that holds these supports, which are currently from about 35.40 down to about 34.30 and rising as Twitter continues to rise, we would consider it a possible long side setup for the brave who are willing to ride it through Twitter's legal saga with Elon Musk. If you'd like to learn more about a cycle analysis and the cycle low timing tracker, please visit our website at askslim.com. Great work on that, Katie. That was really good. Appreciate that you uh, do such an unbelievable job teaching not only a great analyst, 
but a great teacher. So what's new at AskSlim.com? Um, I want you to really watch this uh, amazing video. It's, it's support for traders uh, investing. It's short. Matt's going to bring you some great information on here on our new services uh, that you can get uh, at, at, in many different levels at AskSlim. So Matt will help you with that. We have had a couple updates to the Futures Hub. And I'm going to pull over the Futures Hub. I announced this on, on uh, Discord, and I'll review those very quickly. So there's two updates, enhancements. Now, if you click on the category header, that is going to open up uh, the notes that before we had, but they were a little bit deeper buried uh, down in here. This could be another place for us to add in notes. But right now, if you see the exclamation point, that means that notes have been added into that category. And there's a date on there to let you know when that last note was prepared. I typically try to keep at least one um, prior note in there. There has been some feedback on seeing if, if we might be able to, uh, I'm gonna call it, uh, refine this a little bit so it might be a little bit easier to read. Sloan had a good suggestion that we might use right away to give it a little bit of space. Otherwise, I'll bring that, bring that back to the development team and see if they can help uh, separate these uh, into, into paragraphs. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, uh, next is timestamps. So timestamps have been added to the charts. So you can see here, last updated. Uh, if you're a level four member, obviously you have direct access to these charts. And once we post them in into the, our chart grids page, you can grab those links, you can throw them into your own toss system immediately. Uh, however, if, if you're level three, we try to get that out to you as quickly as possible. It usually takes anywhere from six, 12, at the most 24 hours for our, our support team to take all the screenshots and upload those into the system. We get a lot of questions on, well, you know, when has it occurred? And so now there'll be a timestamp when, when the information has been updated. If you see, see something that doesn't seem uh, correct, if a timestamp looks strange to you based on what you're seeing on the chart, let me know. Because again, this this is new, uh, but uh, you know we've done testing, but it always helps when our members keep out a keep a lookout as well. All right, so those are the those are two good enhancements that were brought to us as feedback from members, and uh, again, keep us posted if there's other things that you see uh, uh, that would be helpful. All right, next is this is fun, this is exciting. So based on the feedback that we received with the futures hub, we went forward with. A uh, development effort, a uh, cycle of development, a sprint, and we put together. I'm going to show you my dashboard here. You'll now see under the workbench if you're level three or four, trade planning hubs new. So now we also have an equities and ETFs hub. So you'll see uh, all of the focus list symbols in here outside of the futures. We kept the, the the primary futures in the futures hub. Now we have the equities and ETFs in their own hub along with the indexes and fix because you know, those those can pertain as as a framework uh, or most. Uh, whether you want to call it popular or interest, uh, is the highest on the indexes. So we carry that over into the equities and ETFs hub. This is going to function basically the same way that uh, it did in the futures hub. Now, this is just released today. So I don't know if we were able to get all the toss links updated. I have to check that to confirm. But you will have the weekly charts, the daily charts, the technical details, and then uh, the toss link if you're a level four or higher member. So this should be, again, our goal is to make your trade planning as efficient and as effective as possible. Uh, the colors, for those of you that aren't, aren't familiar, this is uh, based on our intermediate time frame cycle analysis. So this would be basically the, a combination of, of uh, cycle, cycle structure, cycle translation, and, and momentum is what drives those, uh, basically the three, three colors. So you have green, which would mean a positive condition. We have yellow, which means there is no dominant direction at this time. Uh, and, and then the red would be a bearish, more bearish condition. And then if you click on shortcuts, that's exactly what we've included in here. So this will give you a, a shortcut links to the daily snapshot, ranking system, futures hub, trade idea, cycle of timing tracker, chart streams, and spider ETF review. And just trying to make your experience as easy as possible with finding the key tools and services that you use for your trade planning. All right. Um, so this is this is new. This is in beta. Now keep us posted if you see things that seem uh, out of out of sorts, out of the ordinary um, errors. You know, there shouldn't be any, but if there is, I mean, it is brand new, uh, let us know, please. Okay, next, which, so the, the first few pieces I've shown you, the training and ongoing education, that's all been released. The futures hub update, that's been released. The equities hub just got released today. And the next, the next two pieces I'm gonna talk about are in the development uh, hopper. They've been uh, tested, uh, alpha testing has been going on and they'll be released likely uh, by the end of this week or early next week. So most of you or all of you should be familiar with our ranking system. 
And what we've done is we built a ranking system mobile version light. So we're excited about this for those of you that uh, don't have the ability to be at your desk uh, looking at information, you will be able to access what we call our, our ranking system light uh, on mobile. Again, that should happen as early as Friday, if not early next week. And it is going to contain all of the focus list symbols as you have in the ranking system. And uh, the first release, so version 1.0, will have symbol directional bias, and then it will have the weekly and daily charts. So you'll be able to click on the weekly chart or the daily chart to be able to see those on your, your mobile uh, device, and you'll be able to see the symbol and directional bias. Uh, obviously provide some feedback, you know, things go back into the development schedule, uh, but a, a couple I know that we're going to do is we're likely to hard code the indexes up on top uh, as a default, and then we're going to, and the rest will be in alpha, and then we're going to have some sorting capability on directional bias. So this, this will be very, very helpful for those of us that when we can't be at our desk, uh, we're trying to have uh, a mobile uh, services uh, for, for us, for our trade planning that we do. All right, so that is the mobile version that is coming out for rankings. And then the final piece I wanted to show is something that we're calling our trade planning tools application stack. I'll pull that over. All right, and this, is, this is, uh, has not been released yet, should be by maybe the end of the week, early next week. And again, the, the goal here was to provide a simplified or streamlined experience for our trade planning tools. And uh, we might be reorganizing or flipping uh, one or two of these. Um, and I'll explain that here in a second. But the goal of this was to give you access to, to the hubs, the ranking system, cycle load timing tracker, momentum tracker, rankings, all in one spot. And so there's, there's a, a, a single and dual scroll on here. So your single scroll is going to be for the application that is in direct focus and then the larger second scroll here is for the next application. So you can go from equities and ETFs hub to the futures hub, the cycle load timing tracker, to the ranking system, to the momentum tracker. So all uh, are, are the main um, trade planning tools that we have will be here available to you all on one, on one page. So hopefully, hopefully that's going to be helpful for people. Again, keep the, keep the feedback coming and uh, we appreciate it. And obviously you can see that we take it to heart and, and we do our best to to improve this for all of us, because we're all we're all technicians here and, 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 and traders, so we want to make this again the most efficient and effective technical analysis service uh, in the world. Wow, Matt, our development team has done an unbelievable job on that. Great work. All right, stock market. Well, did you scroll? Um, this, is, this is usually where the stock market analysis is, and people scroll forward and pass uh, everything that we put in there earlier. Uh, well, that analysis is earlier in the show. So, uh, you know, so go back there and watch the whole show. I mean, it's just absolutely great uh, for those of you that have jumped uh, all the way to this point. Uh, and don't go away because coming up is my quickie analysis on the gold market. And when you go back to look for the stock market, don't miss our level four special with great stuff, uh, great support for traders and investors. This is a gold quickie. I'm going to look very quickly at the gold market, looking at uh, the weekly and daily chart. We have been talking about an approaching bottom in the gold market, and I'm going to switch this. Uh, it's on Apple right now, so we'll go to forward slash GC and look at the gold market. We had expected that gold and silver would be coming down into this time frame. Now you can look in here the beautiful cyclical patterns. I'm going to go way back here to that low under 1200 to the rally up to almost 2100. And what's been going on in this long period right over here, back from that peak uh, that it made uh, way in 20 in the middle of 2020, through this right now, the middle of 2022, a two-year consolidation of this big upside move. Our contention was that it would get down into the 1700s. It just barely eked under 1700 right there. And now we're entering into this next cycle period that should be rising and potentially bringing gold to much higher highs. Now our short, our intermediate term analysis, worst case would be getting up right over here uh, through uh, sometime in the fall, uh, maybe up to about 1850 and then much higher prices after that. But that's what we're going to focus on right now is that period right over there out into the fall 
of the first upside uh, move once the low is established in here. Momentum is still negative, as you can see here on the reversal scout. So it has work to do. It is not yet in the period where it is turning up. And Katie will help you with that uh, with our cycle low timing tracker, which she has warned recently has been in the period of downside capitulation. Look at the beautiful cyclical patterns in here. Each of those yellow zones is where there's a nesting on the daily chart and where the periods of risk are. And that was this right over here, slim ribbon negative through this whole time frame in here. You could see the downside resumption signals right there. One little neutral period right there. And now in this period of big downside risk. And that is due to bottom here in coming days. It, it gets down into that blue area, which is the Fib extension area. Outside chance of continuing the capitulation down to about 1665 in the next week or so, but that's yet to be seen. Um, I've made no secret that uh, I like silver, and uh, I think it'll give you the bigger beta. So I've been accumulating physical silver and putting it in bank vault. So uh, that's uh, what I think you need to do if you want to hold on to it. Uh, and uh, now I'm starting to add to some silver ETFs. So because we're getting to this period, I'm just jumping in lightly uh, early, and because uh, I think that the probabilities are high. This uh, on the gold market right over here, this uh, probably projects that 1787. This top of the resistance is about 1809. So that's the real short term resistance. And we would expect that somewhere in here, the dollar index will start to soften for a brief period of time. Uh, not for a long period of time because the dollar looks strong and that'll open up a window in here we'll go where gold will be able to move to the upside. So right now in this capitulation stage and we think that the gold market will uh, soon be getting into a period where it can rally. Weekly cycle analysis on the left where it's bottoming. On the right, the daily cycle analysis in the final stages of that decline. And I'm not showing you but the monthly chart is also bottoming. Uh, in that bottom stage. So the gold market looks absolutely uh, like it's coming to the end of that time, approaching that key bottom that we've been talking about for months and months and months and capitulating on the downside in what we consider to be the highest period of risk. So I hope that was helpful to you for all of those people that are writing me about the gold and silver market. So that's it for that little segment. I hope you have loved this show. Uh, please do go to our website and explore around there. If you're new, become a free member, get some of our information. If you're on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell, and give us a thumbs up, and watch our member videos and the playlists and past shows here on YouTube, and you'll be able to get a good sense for the kind of work we do. On Twitter, follow us at AskSlim, and then uh, make sure that you write Matt at AskSlim.com for any questions you have on anything I showed you, our huge offerings of education and analysis. I want you to be so incredibly careful. It is so crazy out there, and I'm always wishing you great trading. When I'm going to